Adam, I definitely love uh, all Fridays of the Next Right Thing because we get to um, to promote the spirit world, which is on Saturday, and we have our open forum coming up tomorrow. But this is an extra special day, and, and when Keith uh, uh, introduced us and flipped it to us, I was like excited to to share that this is um, the uh, the feast of the Sacred Heart today. And it is celebrated on the Friday after Corpus Christi, which was which was uh, last week, and it, it ties into um, the visions that Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque received from Jesus Himself to make this um, a feast uh, of the Sacred Heart for the whole Church. And thank you, Pope Pius the Ninth, uh, for doing it. So today is. Um, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the feast day, and also First Friday. So the First Friday devotions are in place if everybody wants to take those on. And we'll talk a little bit more about the promises that are attached, especially the 12th promise that's attached to uh, the devotion of um, the First Fridays. So there's so much to cover today, not a lot of time to do it. So let's, why don't you go first? Because as you know, Adam, um, Marty and I do the First Friday devotions. I'm a firm believer of it. It's just for so many reasons. Um, there are many promises att- attached to it. We don't do the devotions to get th- to get those promises fulfilled. However, it's just the way our, our God works. Our God is is such a clear God who 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 a- asks us to step into the circle, and then there's there's all these graces that are in the mm-hmm. circle that that really keep us going. So why don't you start? Um, but I just I just have to thank again Pope Pius the Ninth. Also, John Paul II said uh, he was a great. Um, a follower of Sacred Heart, and he said, this feast reminds us of the mystery of the love of God for for the people of all times. Mm-hmm. John Paul II. Yeah, what Jesus, you know, what Jesus did uh, was for past, present, and future, his past, present, and us in the future, but it's for all times. It's an, an eternal event. So we talked a little bit yesterday um, about love and about Christ's love and his commandment to love one another as he has loved us. And that, in a sense, his entire incarnation and and existence in this world in the years that he lived was an act of love of the Trinity to take us from a place where we would perish into a state where we would have eternal life, or at least the potential for eternal life. Um, In heaven, I mean. You know, sadly, there may be some some people that are experiencing an eternal life that isn't in heaven. But today is a day to focus on the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we won't go back to it again, but we have read a little bit from the Litany of the Sacred Heart. That is an excellent thing to reflect on. If you've never done the Litany or you haven't maybe seen it or done it in a lot of years, it will give you a feel for what is the heart of Jesus in terms of his love for us, the expression of his love, the mercy that is there, the willingness to take on difficulties, insults, burdens, even the lance at the end for us. You know, as he said to the apostles, no greater love, you know, than somebody die for his friend. No greater love can you express for your friend that that you die for them. So, Jesus is the example par excellence of love, and none of us will have that perfect love, and as we talked about yesterday, we're going to fall short in our humanity and our limited experience, but Jesus can elevate us Mm -hmm. and take us to another level of love, and, and the litany is one place to get a feel for that, to imagine if I were to try to, uh, my, imagine my heart as a burning furnace of charity. And that's just one of the lines from the litany. Like, what a powerful phrase, a burning furnace of charity. And charity is, of course, uh, acting for others, seeking the good mm-hmm. of, truth. of the truth. other person. Charity is truth, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is a day, uh, hopefully, to go to Mass, if you, if you can, and start your first Friday devotion, which is mm-hmm. going to Mass on the first Friday of the month, um, hopefully for nine months in a row with some promises associated. Now, I don't know, Deb, if you have those promises I handy. I do. Um, 
that'd be great to maybe remind people of a few of well, those. Well, there's 12 promises, but I just I'm going to just read 11 and 12 because I just it, it uh, 12 pertains to today being first Friday. So if, if anybody wants to make it to mass, we're still early morning, so you can make it to mass. Or if you can't get to mass, you can listen to it um, on the radio or go on EWTN television and watch mass. Very important. But 11 uh, is one of the promises for the uh, devotion to the Sacred Heart, and I just love this, Adam. Number 11: Those who shall promote Promote this devotion, and we're promoting it today, right here on Morning Joy. Those that shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart. I mean, think about that, folks. Don't you want your name written in his heart? How in, how incredible is that? That is that's t- you're tight with Jesus, right? And that's that is so cool. Uh, promise number twelve. I promise you. In the excessive uh, mercy of my heart, <clears throat> excuse me, I get so emotional at these promises. Um, in excessive mercy of my heart, that my all powerful love will grant to all those who receive Holy Communion on the first Fridays in nine consecutive months the grace of final perseverance. They shall not die in my disgrace, nor without receiving their sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in this last moment. I mean, Adam, mm. people long to get to know Jesus. They want to be, be close to Jesus. They want to be tight with Jesus, right? And, and they want to really have Jesus know them and, and to recognize them. It's not going to be like you're walking up to Jesus and shaking his hand and saying, hi, I'm Debbie, and who are you? You know, you're not being introduced. You know, you know each other. You love each other. Um, you trust each other. And when you take on the Sacred Heart devotion, it just it just allows you to have so much of that on this side of the veil now. So it's mm-hmm. not like it's not like you're you're looking forward to when you get to be close to God. You're you're getting close to God now. That's why the Sacred Heart is so, inc- in my opinion, is so incredibly powerful. The Divine Mercy messages so powerful. And isn't it interesting that John Paul II is so connected to all of this? You know, he, he's just the, 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 um, the uh, uh, spiritual director for St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. I believe it was John Paul II that canonized him, St. Claude, right? And so you got all this connection with John Paul II. He knew and he understood um, the idea of, of real, genuine, Christ-like love. Yeah. And, and it's something that, that God has been developing since about the 11th century when the devotion to the wounds of Christ, including his heart, was starting. And in fact, there was a sacred heart devotion. It wasn't global. It wasn't in the universal church as early as the 11th century. And then we see that, you know, and this is a beautiful thing about our faith. We know that Jesus said, you know, there's more things I, I, I need to tell you, but you can't bear them yet. And the Holy Spirit will will teach you and reveal all things to you through time. Um, I'm not quoting exactly, I'm paraphrasing. The beauty of the church through time as the Holy Spirit moves through her and, and the expression of the mystical body of Christ, he wants us to understand his love. Mm-hmm. And down through the centuries, he opens up different ways of encouraging us and to go deeper and to experience that and to live it and express it. You know, we're talking about a devotion from quite a while ago now with the Sacred Heart. And then time goes by and Faustina comes. And a very, some parallels, certainly, with the mercy coming from the heart, coming from the love that brings about mercy, which his whole existence was about. So this is just a wonderful time not only to reflect on this particular devotion but the history of this devotion as something god has been moving us towards exactly for and centuries. unfolding and reminding us yes yes yes, yes. um so i just really encourage everybody this is a time to go a little bit deeper this is a time to give a little bit more mm-hmm. and I know some people are thinking like, well, why would Jesus say you need to go to Mass every Friday for nine months and then you'll you'll have a good death and, you know, it, spiritually a good death. It's not that God is, is saying you need to jump through these hoops and then I'll treat you well. God wants to give us all of these graces. Mm-hmm. And the tasks that he gives us to do, 
themselves bring about spiritual growth. Right. He wants to move us towards more conversion and closer to his heart. And in fact, going and receiving communion more frequently does that because right. every communion we receive transforms us a little bit more, brings mm -hmm. a little bit more grace mm -hmm. into us. And it's neat how God works. As you, as you realize and you come around like, oh, I'm making the extra effort to get to Mass a little more frequently. I'm getting closer to Jesus because I'm going to Mass more frequently. Oh, now I am at peace as I'm approaching my death. He, he wants us to have that grace, but he wants us to participate in it. Yeah. He needs us to grow and not just sit back and wait for him to do it. So he gives us this task for our own benefit, not because he wants to, to put us through some artificial thing. Well, he's a God who loves cooperation. He wants us to participate. And that's why we've said this from day one of Morning Joy. You know, it, uh, folks need to come off the, the uh, bleachers, the, the sidelines, and get into the game. I mean, it is it is a beautiful relationship, and it and it's waiting for you if, as, as long as people want to step into it. I, I agree with you, Adam. I think sometimes we, we wait, and I've been like that too. We wait and say, where are you, God? You know, show up for me. Where are you? It, it, it's, it's, it, it's a two-way street here you know we have to really um uh, show our um willingness to enter into this relationship and it's and and you just got me started on this because now i do want to go back to promise um number number seven the seven and eight it's very important and i think it'll get people really motivated to take on this devotion i just love this day i love the first friday devotions we talked a lot about it on the spirit world we talked about it earlier this week but we keep reminding folks just just to get get started in that direction because it is a spiritual game changer so adam for the promises that uh were made uh, um, were given to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque to give to the whole world. Uh, promise number seven says, lukewarm souls shall become fervent. Okay, lukewarm. So we're talking about people being on the sidelines, being spectators, being observers. Lukewarmness, right? These cafeteria Catholics, if you will. Okay, they all of a sudden start to get uh, that burning love, that, that fire inside of them and that fire in their belly to really go deeper and deeper with Christ. Number eight, fervent souls. Now, this is the one that is such a spiritual game changer, folks. Fervent souls shall quickly mount to high perfection. Okay, mm -hmm. here's what we're trying to do here on Morning Joy is we're, we're traveling on this road to holiness, this road to sainthood, right? And everybody's like, oh my goodness, this is, this is a tough journey, you know, to become a saint. This is really tough. Well, one of the promises that, that once your heart is burning to really get closer and closer to the sacred heart, to Jesus's heart, you quickly will mount to high perfection. That's sainthood, Adam. Mm -hmm. That's holiness. Yeah, and... Sainthood is, you know, when you read the lives of the saints and, and you see their, their kind of expression of love and the development of their spirituality, it becomes clear that sainthood isn't a final destination. Sainthood is something that we look back and realize was going on, but at the time the person is living, yes, they're living heroic virtue, and there's probably people around them saying like, wow, you know, take Mother Teresa. Kind of the world says, wow, you know, that's, that's charitable, that's, that's loving. People may be noticing at the time, but the person themselves, they're just living their lives. They're just doing what they feel is the right thing to do. But what they feel is the right thing to do is growing out of a relationship with Christ, with his love, with his sacred heart in that sense. Uh, it is a godly love that they are trying to express. They're trying to get in touch with. It becomes simply the way they are and the way that they live. But it's not a final destination. Never feel bad like, oh, I haven't reached final perfection, you know, um, so I must be worthless. I must not be doing something right. It's a conversion is a journey that never ends. And learning about God, learning about love, it's going to be throughout your lifetime and in different seasons of your life, you're going to un understand it differently. It's not a final place where you're like, okay, I'm done. I get it. I'm never going to change. And it's just Groundhog Day from here and life's just going to be no changing. Conversion is everlasting. It's a movement towards God that never ends. Uh, so take the journey this year. And then next year, take the journey again. And a decade from now, 
it's going to be a different journey teaching you completely different lessons but you're going to move towards that final perfection in heaven right and and it's the process that matters it, mm -hmm. it's the yearning for god in the movement i think that matters absolutely absolutely so you, you can hear in our voices folks that we are super excited about this this devotion to the sacred heart the month of the sacred heart today is the feast day and you may be thinking to yourself well like okay what am i supposed to do how do i start how do i really you know put my toe in the water and and, and get this going because i want a relationship with jesus too i want to be written in his heart well, in my in my humble opinion, Adam, it's very simple. Um, if you if you have an image of the Sacred Heart, put it up prominently somewhere in your home. Have it blessed. If you don't, print one off on the internet. At least get the image in front of you in, in view, so you can meditate upon the image. Go back to what John Paul II has said, that this feast reminds us of the mystery of the love of God. So simply say that to Jesus. Jesus, I, this is a mystery to me. I, this, is, this is so much bigger than I am. I, I don't understand it. I want, to, I want to be intimately connected to your heart. I don't know how it's going to unfold, but I'm willing to, to enter into this. I'm, I'm, I want this relationship. Start there and you'll see how... You know, just by having the image in your home, by by meditating on the image, by by under by asking God to enter into this relationship that you are, are freely entering into this relationship, you want to, to know more about Him, love Him, serve Him, all, everything that the Catechism says we are to be as Christians. I can uh, pretty much. Would you say this is true, Adam? We can pretty much assure everyone who's listening that God responds. And he mm -hmm. responds generously with his unconditional love. What do you say to that? Yeah, and the other encouraging thing I would say, and this is something I've learned through, you know, working in the area of, of deliverance and exorcism, when it comes to these high spiritual matters, it, it can seem overwhelming. And like in our limited humanity, I could never do that. Um, what I have found to be really powerful in working with people um, in deliverance and exorcism is to say to Jesus, I want to forgive this person completely, but I just can't. I'm so wounded. Please make up for what I can't do mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And they, they do, you know, their 100% might be a 50% forgiveness in their heart and just ask Jesus, Jesus to make up the rest for you and show the effort. He doesn't require us to be him or to be perfect like him in terms of perfect love and perfect forgiveness and perfect charity. But he requires us to do our best. Right. And if we offer our sincere best and ask him to make up the rest and through the Holy Spirit, inspire in this person what you want them to get out of this relationship I'm having with them in this moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do my best to be loving in an unconditional way please give them through your grace the rest of it so they can feel you so people can encounter you you know we we hear this in in christian philosophy and morality that people should encounter jesus through us because how else are they going to encounter him That's the right. rare people are going to get a vision like saint mary mm -hmm. uh, margaret mary alacoque mm -hmm. the rare people are going to get a vision of him they're just going to meet him but for most of us they're going to encounter jesus through Christians, right. through us, which is why he said, love one another as I have loved you. Yep. Amen to that. So um, folks, you can check us out uh, tomorrow and tune in on the Spirit World, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, we're doing an open forum. It's very popular. If you have something to say about this devotion, if it has been a real game changer in your life, a spiritual a game changer, call in and share with the world. It's very important. Uh, but Adam, I just want to go back. I got to circle back because you now you got me going again on the, on the 12 promises. So promise number nine, Jesus said, I will will bless every place in which an image of my heart is exposed and honored, and he will bring peace to the home. Wow. Adam, I think we all need that in this day and age when the world is really crazy, really loud with technology and everything vying for our attention and time. Uh, don't you want Jesus to bless every place in which an image of his heart is exposed and honored? So get that image in your homes, in your cars, in your office space, anywhere you can get the sacred heart image, especially on this grace 
great feast day. Oh, Adam, you know, I could talk about this forever. I grew up with the uh, devotion of the Sacred Heart because of my mom. And I, I tell you, I just, I truly want that for everyone. I think it, it really can help us at this time. So thank you, Adam. We hear the, we got the signal from our producer, Tim. We're going to, we have to send it back to Keith for the rest of Morning Joy.